Chicago has all the offerings you'd expect from a major city. World-class museums, vibrant shopping districts and ample nightlife venues. If you're here to learn, plan to spend a fair amount of time in Grant Park. For a more windy city-centric education, start your vacation with an Architecture River Cruise, which can provide background on Chicago's famous skyscrapers. Just save time for some of the city's quintessential experiences. In this video, we're going to be taking a look at the top 10 best things to do in Chicago. And just wait till you see the number one that we're going to be showing in this video. Something you would have never even thought of, so make sure you watch till the end. Before we begin, you can help support our channel by becoming a member of this channel. Press the join button below. This will help us to bring you more awesome travel videos. But now, let's cut to the chase. At number 10, the Field Museum. This extensive natural history museum occupies half an acre of Grant Park's museum campus and houses extensive exhibits that showcase artifacts from multiple eras and destinations, making it a must-see for kids as well as any fans of the Indiana Jones movies. Some of the most popular parts of the museum include the Inside Ancient Egypt exhibit, which features a reconstruction of a three-story replica of an Egyptian tomb and interactive representations of life on the Nile, and the restoring Earth area in the Abbott Hall of Conservation, where visitors can learn more about sustainability through hands-on activities. But no visit to the Field Museum would be complete without some quality time with Sue, the facility's T-Rex, who just happens to be the largest, most complete T-Rex ever discovered. Sue is 40 feet long from nose to tail and boasts 58 terrifying teeth, much like my own. At 9, the Chicago Riverwalk. When the winter warms up in Chicago, there are few better places to enjoy the outdoors than the Chicago Riverwalk. The 1.25-mile pedestrian walkway on the south bank of the Chicago River is the perfect place to take a walk and observe the city skyline. Plus, there are numerous activity options to enjoy directly on the water, such as a boat tour or kayaking. If you prefer dry land, explore the public gardens and art displays or grab a meal at a popular restaurant or bar overlooking the Chicago River. And if you want to learn more about the river's unique history, check out the McCormack Bridge House and Chicago River Museum, which celebrates the city's famous movable bridges. Art on the Mart, a massive digital art projection on the facade of the Mart, formerly the Merchandise Mart, is best viewed from the Riverwalk. Recent travellers said strolling the Riverwalk is a nice way to view the city, but they did not recommend visiting during the frigid winter. The urban park is free to access, and it is open daily from 6am until 11pm. If you can, visit during St. Patrick's Day weekend, when the entire river is dyed green. The public walkway is located downtown, following the south bank of the river from North State Street and stretching east to North Lake Shore Drive. It features several access points. There are a few parking lots and L stations near the attraction. Next up at 8, Art Institute of Chicago. Home to one of the country's most impressive collections of Impressionist and Post-Impressionist art, plus works from numerous other genres, the expansive Art Institute of Chicago features more than 300,000 works from all over the world in its permanent collection. You'll find pieces created in the Byzantine era as well as paintings done just a few decades ago. The Art Institute's exhibits also include all sorts of intriguing artefacts, from European armour to the Thorn Miniature Rooms, which showcase interior design and furnishings in Europe and America from the late 13th to early 20th centuries. In addition to the permanent collection, the Art Institute hosts travelling exhibitions covering a variety of subjects and showcasing a diverse array of artists and genres. And at 7, Museum of Science and Industry. Chicago's extensive Museum of Science and Industry pays tribute to the city's innovative roots, showcasing more than 35,000 artifacts and a variety of hands-on exhibits meant to inspire creativity. The museum resides in the 14-acre former Palace of Fine Arts, which hosted the famous World's Columbian Exposition in 1893. The fair brought together some of the world's greatest scientific minds, including Thomas Edison and Nikola Tesla, who at the time were competing to prove which type of electricity, direct current or alternating current, was more effective. You can learn more about the War of the Currents and a variety of other topics inside the museum. Displays here cater to all types of curious minds. 
enjoy a tour of, of the only U-505 German submarine captured during World War II, explore distant stars and planets at the Henry Crown Space Center, consider the history of modern aviation at the Take Flight exhibit, and see baby chicks up close at the Genetics and Baby Chicks Hatchery. The Museum of Science and Industry also features an Omnimax theater and hosts a variety of live demonstrations. Next up at 6, Chicago Architecture River Cruise. A visit to 360 Chicago or Skydeck Chicago will give you a good overview of the city's layout. But if you want to learn more about Chicago's sky-high buildings, tag along on an Architecture River Cruise. During a river cruise, you'll gain great views and historical insight about well-known structures like the Wrigley Building, the Leo Burnett Building and the Fulton House. Those several companies, including Wendella Sightseeing Co. and Chicago Line Cruises, offer Architecture River Cruises. Most travelers recommend climbing aboard a Chicago's First Lady Cruises boat with a Chicago Architecture Center docent. You'll learn tons of information about the area's architecture, plus catch superb skyline photo ops. At 5, Lincoln Park Zoo. Located two miles north of the Loop in the north side neighborhood of Lincoln Park, the Lincoln Park Zoo is home to nearly 200 species, such as zebras, sloths and hippos. Visitors can view the zoo's furry or scaly friends in their natural habitats. Check out the gorillas in the sprawling Regenstein Center for African Apes or head to the Cobbler Seal Pool to get up close and personal with harbor seals. Recent travelers appreciated all of the large mammal species found here, as well as the zoo's lack of an entrance fee. If you have kids in tow, sign them up for one of the zoo's camps, during which children can learn about nature through animal visits and hands-on activities. That's not inside the cage. Also plan on using public transportation or a taxi to get to the zoo, since there's limited availability in the zoo's parking lot. And while parking is free for the first half hour, after that parking fees range from $20 to $35 per day. Next up at 4, Navy Pier. Extending out onto Lake Michigan, Navy Pier offers plenty in the way of family-friendly entertainment. The first thing you'll spot once you set foot on the pier is the towering Ferris wheel, which stands 196 feet tall. You'll also find a swing seat ride and a carousel. Once the kids have had their fill of thrill rides, you can spend some time practicing your putt at the 18-hole miniature golf course or spend a few hours exploring the Chicago Children's Museum with hands-on exhibits ranging from tree houses to fire trucks. But you don't have to be a kid to enjoy a visit to Navy Pier. Grown-ups can catch a show at the Chicago Shakespeare Theatre, flex some credit card muscle at a variety of shops or grab a drink at the Miller Lite Beer Garden. And be sure to check Navy Pier's website for a list of events Concerts are often held here, and during the summer and New Year's Eve, impressive fireworks displays are the norm. In fact, many of the city's top Segway tours offer special summer evening tours to the pier to catch the semi-weekly fireworks show. In at three, the Magnificent Mile. If you can feel your credit card burning a hole through your wallet, and who can't, make your way to the Magnificent Mile. This portion of Michigan Avenue, which stretches between Lakeshore Drive and the Chicago River, beckons to shopaholics with department stores and luxury retailers like Bloomingdale's, Marcus, Macy's and Nordstrom. Additionally, the Magnificent Mile is home to several top-notch eateries and luxury hotels, including the Drake, the Sofitel Chicago, Magnificent Mile and the Intercontinental Chicago Magnificent Mile. Architecture buffs will also appreciate a stroll down this street thanks to its eclectic collection of buildings. While you're walking around, turn your eyes upward for views of the Chicago Water Tower, which survived the Great Chicago Fire of 1871 and is the longest standing structure on Michigan Avenue. Other structural highlights include the Wrigley Building and Tribune Tower. Number 2. Millennium Park A first-time visit to Chicago isn't complete without a stop at Millennium Park. Situated in the loop just north of the Art Institute of Chicago, this 24.5-acre space is used to showcase cutting-edge art, architecture and landscaping. It also acts as a backdrop for concerts and festivals. Most visitors come to Millennium Park to see the Crown Fountain and Cloud Gate, better known as the Bean. 
Designed by Spanish artist Jean Plensa, the Crown Fountain features two 50-foot towers that face each other at opposite ends of a shallow reflecting pool. From May to October, the tower's LED screens project the faces of a thousand different Chicago residents, which are perfectly aligned with spouts, so that it appears they are spitting water on passers-by. Cloudgate, created by British artist Anish Kapoor, is a 110-ton bean-shaped sculpture forged from stainless steel. The bean's elliptical shape reflects the Chicago skyline. And finally, drum roll please for number one, Grant Park and Buckingham Fountain. Often referred to as Chicago's front yard, Grant Park is a 313-acre swathe of green space that starts at the eastern edge of the loop and stretches down to the northern fringes of the near south side. First-time visitors should plan on spending a fair amount of time in Grant Park. This is where you'll find several of Chicago's most popular things to do, including the Field Museum, the Art Institute of Chicago and Shedd Aquarium. Baseball diamonds, flower gardens, walking paths and wide-open grassy terrains are available as well. At the heart of Grant Park is Buckingham Fountain. One of the largest fountains in the world, this tiered water feature boasts 133 jets that shoot water as high as 150 feet into the air during 20-minute choreographed displays. At night, the fountain's performance is accompanied by lights and music. And there you have the top 10 things to do in Chicago. Did you like what you saw? Let us know in the comments down below. Share this video with your friends and don't forget to subscribe to our channel for more fantastic travel guides. See you next time.